So you can see that this image here is blue. This image here is actually red or our flare is actually red. So it's not quite correct. And this is because of the way What's happening guys? Welcome to the OpenCV basic series. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how you can read in images, work with them, so be able to visualize them as well as how to customize them and write them out to disk. Let's take a deeper look as to what we'll be going through. So as I was saying, in this video, we're gonna be focused on working with images. Now, OpenCV is a really full featured package that allows you to work with images, but also video. In this tutorial, we're gonna be focused on working with images. Specifically, we're gonna be focused on a couple of key things. We're gonna learn how to read in an image from our disk. So this means that you'll be able to load up any images that you got lying around on your desktop. We'll also take a look at how we can visualize them inside of a Jupyter Notebook using Matplotlib. And last but not least, we'll take a look at how we can write out those images to disk. So once we've gone and done a little bit of pre-processing, we'll be able to write it out so that we can use it elsewhere, which is really, really important when it comes to seeing the outputs of your computer vision work. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, so working with images. Now, as I was saying at the start, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be focused on reading, rendering, and writing out our images. Now, we also need to import our dependencies so we can actually work with our images. So first up, what we're gonna do is we are going to go on ahead and import the dependencies. Now, we really just need OpenCV and OS to work with this. And specifically, we need OS so that we can work with our folder structures because I'll show you where our images are in a second. So first up, let's go on ahead and import our dependencies. Then we'll be able to read in our images, render them, and then write them out. So let's go on ahead and do this. Okay, so we've got our two dependencies that we needed to import there. So I've just written import CV2 and import OS. So remember from our first basics video, what we need to do in order to import OpenCV is just write import CV2. Again, don't ask me why it's called that, but it is. And then we've also imported a second Python library called OS. And this basically allows us to work with the operating system that we're currently working in. So in terms of forward slashes and backward slashes for file paths, it just simplifies that a little bit. Now I've actually got two images that we're gonna be working with. So inside of, let's see if I can make some large icons, Never mind. So inside of our root folder, so I've got this folder here called data. And then inside of that, I've got a folder called images. And then there I've got two images. So one of a bike, let me zoom out, or a guy on a bike from Unsplash. And then I've got another one of someone holding up a flare. So what we're going to need to do is pass through the full path to this folder or these images in order to be able to read these in. So if we take a look at their properties, we can see that they are 2,190. Let me zoom in on that so you can see it. So 2,190 pixels by 2,738. And they are, uh, what's the file type as well? So it is a .jpg file. So we'll need to pay attention to that when it comes to reading in our image. Cool, but that's fine. Let's go on ahead and do this. So what we first up need to do is define a path. So we can either define a path as a separate line or we can either just read it in. So I'm just gonna define a new path. So image path equals os.path.join and then we're gonna put in the full path to our image. So remember it's inside of a folder called data and inside of a folder called images and the name of the image is called bike.jpg or at least this one this one over here is called bike.jpg. Cool. So we can pass that through. So bike.jpg. Right. So that is our file path or our image path. So if I go and print that out, you can see it's giving us the full path to our image over there. So it's data backward slash backward slash images backward slash backward slash bike.jpg. If you're doing this on Colab or on a Mac, the forward slashes will be the other way, but that's all good. Now what we can do in order to read this image is use the cv2.imread method to read it in. So if I type in cv2.im read, this is actually going to allow us to read in our image. Now if we want to view some documentation, we can type in question mark, question mark, and you can see this function imread loads an image from a specified file and returns it. So there's a whole bunch of different file types that we can use. So um, JFIF, I know is becoming a popular one on where Google Chrome, but it doesn't look like that supports that might, who knows, but we're going to be using it to load a JPEG. So that is perfectly fine. So pretty straightforward. All we now need to do is pass through our image path to it. So if I cut that image path there and paste it in here, and let's delete that cell to keep it nice and clean. 
this has read in our image. So you can see what we're actually going to get back is a NumPy array. Now let's store that inside of a variable. So I'm just going to call it IMG, set it equal to that. And if we type our printout IMG now, this is actually our image. Now image has a shape of 2,738 by 2,190 by three. So if we actually compare that to our image, you can see that what we're actually, oh, sorry, we're moving that around incorrectly. So what we're actually getting back is the height by the width by the number of channels. So this first dimension here is how high our image is or effectively its height. The second dimension is its width. And then the last dimension is the number of channels because this is a color image. What you're actually gonna get is a blue layer, a green layer and a red layer because that's how OpenCV reads it in. Cool, but that is our image now read in. So it's pretty straightforward, right? So we pass through or we use cv2.imread and then we pass through the full file path to that specific image. If I wanted to type in the file path directly into here, I could do that as well. I can even cut this out of here, paste it here, it's effectively the same. So if I go and run this, again, still reading in our image. Now, if we wanted to load in a different image, so I'm just gonna switch this back. If we wanted to load in a different image, all we need to do is load in the file path to that image. Now, remember we had a second image inside of our data folder called Flare, and let's check the file type for that one as well. Oh, we zoomed in a little weirdly. Uh, properties, so it's called Flare.jpg. So let me zoom in on that so you can see it's called Flare, and then it has a .jpg extension. So all we need to do is change the file path. So if I type in Flare into our image path, run that again, and then rerun our cv2.im read line, and then run image.shape. You can see it's reloaded it in again. And remember, we've got height by width, height by width by number of channels. So we could actually unpack that. So height by width by channels equals that. All right, so now we actually have each one of these unpacked. So height, width, and channels. Cool, so that is reading in our image pretty much done now. So cv2.imread is going to be your friend here. So remember to that, we need to pass through the image path and then we can store the variable inside or we can store the output inside of a variable. And the variable is going to have, or the variable that we actually get back is going to be an array of the shape, height, width, and then channels. Now you're probably thinking, Nick, I've read this in as an array. How do I actually do stuff with it or visualize it? Well, this brings us to step number three where we can actually render our image. So to render our image, we first up need to install a library called matplotlib. Now there is a function called cv2.imshow, but it doesn't play all that nicely when you're working with Jupyter. So we're gonna use matplotlib's rendering functionality. To do that, we first up need to install matplotlib. So let's go on ahead and do that. So to install it, I'm just gonna type in an exclamation mark, pip install matplotlib. So just a single line, you can see I've already got it installed. It's so pretty straightforward. So exclamation mark, pip, install, and then matplotlib. Now, if I go and add another cell, what we can actually do is render the image that we just brought in from over here. So remember, this is actually going to be stored as an array. So if we take a look at image again, we've got this big array of values here. Now, what you're actually getting back is three different arrays overlaid on top of each other, one each for each color channel. So one for blue, one for green, and one for red. Now the values inside of there are going to be between a range of zero to 255, because this represents the different color ranges that you've actually got in the RGB color spectrum when you're working with images. So what we can actually do is use that to our advantage and use matplotlib to render that image. Now it's pretty straightforward. So I'm just gonna add in a comment. So uh, show image. All we need to do is type in plot.imshow and then pass through our image. And we have not imported matplotlib, so we need to import matplotlib. So I'm going to write uh, from matplotlib import pyplot as plt. And then we can show it. So if I go and run that cell again, you can see that that is our image now shown. And remember the last image that we loaded in was the flare image. Now, there's a few things wrong with this, right? So right now you can see that our flare in here is in blue. But if we actually go and take a look at our original image, Let's go and find it. So it's inside of this folder and open CV and from our source folder, it's inside of data and then images and then flare. So you can see that this image here is blue. This image here is actually red or our flare is actually red. So it's not quite correct. And this is because of the way that open CV works with the different color channels versus how matplotlib works with it. So matplotlib 
expects the image to be in the format of RGB. However, matplotlib, so, RG, so matplotlib expects it to be in the format RGB, whereas OpenCV actually reads it in as BGR. Now there's an easy solution to this. We can actually reshape those color channels or reorder them. So let me show you how to do that. So again, we're gonna use the plot.imshow function. And rather than just passing through the straight image this time, I'm actually gonna recolor it. So let's actually create a new image. So I'm gonna call it recolor. And we are going to use the CB2 cvt color method to recolor now to that we need to pass through two arguments first up our image and then the second argument is how we want to recolor our image so we can actually pass through a color conversion code in order to do that i'm just going to type in cv2.color underscore bgr to rgb and this is actually going to recolor our image now so if i go and show it inside of matplotlib you can see that now we're rendering the color in its true form. And when matplotlib renders, you also get this little axis um, properties feature here. We can actually get rid of this by typing in plot.show after plot.imshow. So it sort of gets rid of that. But you can see that there is a difference in color between here and here. And that is mainly how you're going to be rendering an image. Now, if you wanted to render a different image, again, you just got to change the file path. So if we change it back to bike, and went and run th ran through this again. We don't need to reinstall matplotlib. But you can see now we're rendering our bike image. So pretty straightforward. You pass through your file path to the cv2.imread method. And then in order to render it, you can use the plot.imshow method from matplotlib. Now, the last thing that I wanted to show you is how to write out an image. Now, keep in mind, we've gone and recolored our image. So if we wanted to write it out, well, let's actually recolor it to gray, right? So rather than leaving it as uh, RGB, we could actually convert it to gray. So I'm going to create a new variable called gray, and I'm going to set that equal to cv2.cvtColor. And again, we're going to pass through our baseline image. But this time, rather than passing through the color conversion code for BGR to RGB, we're going to try a different one. So if I type in dot after cv2 and hit tab, I can type in color. And we're going to type in underscore and we're going to say BGR2. And we're actually going to set it BGR to gray. So this is going to give us a gray version of our image. So if I run that now, if we go and pass that to our matplotlib or yeah, matplotlib function, you can see that we've now got a gray image. In this case, it's looking a little bit weird. But when we actually output this out, you'll actually see its true color. So let's go on ahead and write out our image. Okay, and that's pretty it, <laughs> pretty much it when it comes to writing out our image. All we need to do is write cv2.imwrite, pass through the file path to our image. So in this case, I've just written gray image.jpg, and then you actually pass through the image that you want to export, which in this case is going to be our gray image from out here. So if we go and take a look at that image now, so I've just, I haven't actually passed through a full file path here, right? So you can see that it's just saying gray image.jpg. This means it's going to write out into our root folder. So if I go into our root folder, you can see that we've got this file here called gray image. And that is the image that we've gone and output. And you can see we've now gone and converted our image to grayscale. So before we had a color image, so it's inside of data and images. So we had our color image from over here. And this is our grayscaled version. So you can see that really quickly, we've been able to go on ahead and convert our image and write it out. So this is some basic image processing. We're obviously going to take this way further. But at a baseline, this is what's possible. Now, if we wanted to write it out to a different place, so let's say rather than writing it out to our root folder, we wanted to write it out to our output folder inside of our data folder. Let's delete this. This was a test. We can actually do that as well. So let's define our output path first. Okay, so I've gone and defined an output path there. So I've written one line of code and I've written output underscore path equals os.path.join. And then to that, I've passed through three positional arguments. For first up, I've passed through the top level folder, so data, which is going to be this folder. And then I've passed through the second folder that I want to go in, which is output. And then the last argument that I've actually passed through is what I want our image name to be, which is output gray.jpg. Now, if we go and run cv2.imwrite, let's make sure I've typed that correctly. And then if we pass through our output path as the first argument, and then our gray image is the second argument, this is going to output our image into our output path. So if we go and take a look, 
you can see that we've got an image called output gray inside of our data and output folder. We open that up. That is successfully written out our gray image. So that in a nutshell is step four now done. So we've effectively gone and written out our image. And that is pretty much it. So again, it's gonna be super basic in these videos. So we've gone and done a ton of stuff. So we went and imported our dependencies. We learned how to read in an image using the cv2.imread method. We took a look at how we can render our images inside of a Jupyter notebook using the matplotlib plot.imshow method. And remember, you just need to pass through your image there. But if you're loading it using OpenCV, you also need to do that color conversion, which we did over here to be able to recolor our image to go from BGR to RGB. So that allowed us to recolor it. So if we take a look at that, you can see that that is our true tones. And then last but not least, we took a look at how to write out our image using the cv2.im write method. But on that note, that about does wrap it up. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell. And as per usual, all the codes are going to be available in the description below. And if you get stuck or need any help, hit me up in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you out. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.